This is example 1.7-8. A tensile test is performed on a brass specimen 10 millimeters in diameter using a gauge length of 50 millimeters. When the tensile load P reaches a value of 20 kilonewtons, the distance between the gauge marks has increased by 0.122 millimeters. What is the modulus of elasticity E of the brass? And if the diameter decreases by 0 0.0083 millimeters, what is Poisson's ratio? All right, so here we have a rod made of brass and we are pulling on it. And we start with two marks that are 50 millimeters apart. And as we pull on it, those marks uh, get farther apart, not very much. Uh, they don't move much, but it is measurable, and we can use this information to find the modulus of elasticity, which you remember is the slope of the stress strain curve before the proportional limit. And so that slope tells us it's basically like a spring constant. So it tells us how, how much force is required to um, stretch the bar at each distance, or another way of thinking of it is how hard the bar pulls back against you once you stretch it a certain amount. And so E is that slope, or that constant we're trying to find, and the Poisson's ratio has to do with another concept, where when we stretch the bar out, not only do these points get farther away, but the bar actually gets thinner. So it says the diameter decreases by this amount. And Poisson's ratio has to do with um, basically the percentage-wise, how much the how much the diameter decreases relative to how much the gauge length increases. And again, it's like a, a fraction, so it's relative to the starting value. And we'll be able to see that better once we actually do the math. So for our givens, we have um, the diameter as well as the gauge length and our load P and the distance to gauge marks um, the, the amount the gauge length increases, this value, which is our delta, or our change in length. And then for part B, we're also given the, um, the change in diameter, which is our delta prime. And we use the prime notation for um, saying that it's not in the axial direction. So normally we have our change in length or a strain along the axis. But when we're talking about those values perpendicular to it, we put, uh, use the prime notation. All right, another thing we should point out is um, when it gives us the change in length for our gauge length, uh, you can see it, it says it increased, which means our delta is positive. But for the diameter, the change in value um, is negative because it says it decreased. So we need to make sure we have the signs right on those so that we can use our equations correctly. And then we are trying to find um, e modulus of elasticity, and then our Poisson's ratio. And I believe this value is called nu. Basically, it looks like a curve V. All right, so first of all, uh, we're going to be finding the modulus of elasticity. And this requires that we know our stress and strain because remember it's the slope of that line. And 
So basically we're assuming that P is below the proportional limit, or the stress at P is below the proportional limit so that we can um, assume that the line is linear and find the slope. So to find that slope, we need our stress and our strain. So let's start with the stress. Stress is force over area. In this case, our force is P and our area, which is a cross-sectional area, is going to be a circle. Um, so we have pi d squared and it's divided by four. And when you divide the denominator by something, you can stick that up on the numerator. And so we have our value our symbols for stress and we can plug them in. And I'm going to use parentheses to symbolize substituting in values directly for where our um, symbols are. All right, so this is what we get when we um, put it into our calculators and but we want to convert this into Pascals with a prefix. And so I'm going to do this. Um, if we do it this way, then we don't have to think too hard or question ourselves. Um, it's basically the value we're trying to get rid of is on top, so we're going to put that on the bottom. And we're trying to go to newtons, so a thousand newtons in a kilonewton. So this value right here is equal to one, so we are allowed to multiply by it and cancel out these. And then to convert the square millimeters, we're going to put the millimeters on the opposite side, so they cancel, and then meters on the bottom, and there are. 1,000 millimeters in a meter, and they are squared, so we square the top and the bottom, and we can cancel those out, and we are left with our newtons over meters squared, so we can say this is equal to 0.255 Um, and we can't forget our, our 1,000s, and since this is squared, uh, we shouldn't cross out the 2. We have 3 of those, so one thousand to the 3rd, Pascals. And I'm going to use one of these to move this decimal here, and then the other 2. Uh, we'll turn into prefixes. And so there's our stress. And now we need to find our strain, which is equal to our change in length over the original length. All right, so I just realized I have, um, I missed something in the givens here. So we are going to fix that. All right, and so this gives us a strain, um, which is unilist, uh, 0 0.00. Two four four. And now we can find our modulus of elasticity, which is our stress over strain. And this is what we get when we perform our calculation and 
we can get rid of the unnecessary zeros by changing our prefix. So we have 105 gigapascals. This is one of our final answers. And so that was part A. So I guess it'd be good to label our parts here. And we're going to move on to part B, which is finding the Poisson's ratio. And so the Poisson's ratio is a ratio between our axial strain and our strain that is perpendicular to the axis. And so we need to find our that other strain, which is epsilon prime. And the equation for that is very similar for our axial strain, where we have our delta in um, this new direction. And instead of our original length, it is relative to our original diameter. Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be the diameter, because if this had said that the radius had decreased by this amount, then we would put the radius on the bottom here. And again, this one is unitless because it's a strain. And you can see that it is negative. So we have a negative strain, which means it got smaller. So that makes sense. And then we can find our Poisson's ratio, which is equal to the negative epsilon prime over epsilon. And so you can see the negative is going to cancel out, which makes sense because Poisson ratios are for normal materials are positive. And we get 0.34. And this makes sense because a lot of materials have a Poisson ratio of about 0.3. I think aluminum is exactly 0.3. So this is a very reasonable number. And this is a final answer. So we do our double underline and arrow. And that is the end of the problem.